All right, today, as they say, proof is in the pudding. Yes, the probably most requested uh, buyer's guide of all time, which is, what are all these little blue bottles from KZ? <laughs> uh, this is the result of a 20 year plus uh, coral farm at Coral and Zucht. And uh, what I'm told is Germany's largest coral farm and like a retail location, but maybe actually all of Europe. Mm. Uh, so a lot of these things, practical experience yeah. using these products to the desired effect. I'm pretty certain that this is the only additive company in the planet that can say that. Actually uses all of this stuff on their own good to create the largest uh, coral <laughs> farm in, uh, in Germany uh, and maybe Europe. So today we're going to find out what all these little blue bottles are and how they work together. First off, if you're looking for some inspiration, where should you go? Go to the gallery on KZ, their customer tanks and their coral farm. This is where you see those iconic, you know, KZ SPS uh, colonies that have these vibrant pastel colors and, you know, synonymous with uh, running like a Zeovit system. But even like their LPS uh, are just gorgeous in color too. A lot of it has to do with all these blue bottles. Yeah, so you can see a bunch of pictures of the farm and the type of corals they produce there, but also maybe even more importantly, again, the proofs in the pudding, you can see dozens of customer tanks, all of which are probably some of the coolest tanks you'll <laughs> see in your lifetime. And you know what? You can emulate their success and find it for yourself. All right, so normally we'd start off by telling you the number one thing that you guys are picking up, but in this case, there's so many. I think you're in the top 10, and then we'll hit on what they are in a little bit. But just knowing that an idea of what mm. it is and how people use these things is probably helpful. So I'll start with the top five. Uh, the first one, uh, the number one item that you guys pick up is the uh, flatworm stop. And then hits buddy or companion <laughs> product, the coral booster, uh, followed by CyanoClean. Yeah. Considering how many people have cyano and not having to use a, like a toxin makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, followed by the coral system, one, two, three, four. And then Paul's uh, coral vitalizer. Yeah, and the another five, the next five are the Zeovit starter package. This is really what you need to get uh, off the ground with Zeovit. Not all of these blue bottles. Some are options, we'll talk about those in a bit. Amino acid concentrate, amino acid LPS for LPS specific amino acids, sponge power for your filter feeders, and AcroGlow. All right, so if you're not confused yet, uh, you haven't been paying attention. That is why today's uh, video actually exists, is we're going to break these into some little pockets so you can understand how to use these things and what to expect. All right, spoiler alert <laughs> right up front. Uh, what Randy and I would use ourselves in this case, uh, I don't know if we differ, but we're using different things. Yeah, uh, for me, proof is in the pudding and I've seen it in multiple tanks around here. So the BRS 160 bundle pack, we just packed the, these ones up together because these are the ones we actually use for the 160, for the 750, seven little bottles, all kind of difference of foods and additives and trace elements, all in one package. This is what I would dose at home. So yeah, if you want to emulate the success of the BRS 160, there it is. This is the stuff we use every day. It's actually used in the E170 and the 750 All now uh, as well. All right, so for me, I'm doing something slightly different yeah. at home. And now this is a different tank as well. It's just a LPS dominant tank in my house. And so I'm just using the Coral System 1, 2, 3, 4, A, uh, because it's easy. Uh, it only needs to be dosed once a week. And then daily I do use two things. I use the Coral Vitalizer, Paul's Coral Vitalizer, because mm -hmm. I want to get all the polyps out. The uh, corals look uh, much more like uh, puffy and uh, beautiful. And uh, I also feed the LPS uh, amino acids every day. So so uh, right along with the food, uh, I throw that in there. Now you might ask why I use one, two, three, four instead of this. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I haven't used it long enough to tell you for sure exactly <laughs> what it's going to do. I'm using it on you guys' behalf. Uh, so you mm. follow along and you'll find out exactly how much I adore it. But if you want the time-tested option, I would definitely go with Randy's pick because <laughs> we all know what this produces. Uh, this one, man, I'm testing it for you. It's a lot easier. And you know, it's for an LPS tank in my case, but really the one, two, three, four is really for any tank, including Acros. All right, so getting to the meat of it, uh, they're really, again, we're looking for those things that says, ah, oh, this is me. Uh, <laughs> you signed this up, you made it and designed it around me. And the first one is, is 
I have my own nutrient export. Mm -hmm. Nitrate and phosphate isn't my issue. I've already got that under control. I don't really need the whole zeovit thing, but I do care about coral coloration in health. And in this case, it is the one, two, three, four, right? I actually asked those guys a while ago to make this a lot easier, yeah. right? Because, I mean, you look at all these bottles and you're like, wow, man, what do we do? We'll get right? there, yeah. Uh, and so that is actually the result of that conversation is they made it a much simpler version mm. that the average person could do. Uh, and it's just the one, two, three, four. And I'll be honest, uh, at first glance, uh, I was like, man, I, I bought this for, uh, my 360 gallon tank and it was 200 bucks for four bottles. Yeah. Uh, and I felt like, wow, that's a lot. But I found out that I only use 80 milliliters wow. uh, of it uh, once a week. And I'm like, you know what? This is like 20 bucks a month or something yeah. for, you know, a whole additive system that, uh, I don't, you know what, it was a lot cheaper once they did the math on it. So uh, I don't know. Uh, if you're just looking to make sure you get the three different coloration agents in there, the different elements to support that, and the amino acids to help produce uh, uh, proper tissue and protein production, there it is. It's really simple. One, two, three, four. <laughs> All right, so we've already kind of touched on this, <laughs> but like, what if you are the one that says, I just want to do whatever you did in the 160. Yeah, I, that's me. And that's why it's my number one choice, the BRS 160 pack. Uh, actually, Jen has, well, came, ever since Jen came on, she saw us using it in all these tanks. She now uses it in her tanks at her store. Uh, and it's just, it, it's the same type of, uh, you know, make this easy for me, wade through the blue bottles for me, pick out the ones that uh, I can follow and see that you guys have used. Proof is in the pudding. That's why the 160 pack is in there. So LPS, aminos, amino acid concentrates, coral booster, sponge powers, the flatworm stop and the uh, coral booster, and then the poles extra. Yeah, so the flatworm stop actually does more than just stops flash, uh, flatworms too. Mm. It like really helps with uh, like making strong tissue, which is one of the primary ways it fights <laughs> off the flatworms. So like general health. I, it was interesting because I actually stopped at her uh, facility as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and when she was there, you know, she's like, I've been using the coral boost and a flatworm stop forever. But you know what? That pack that you guys use on the 160, <laughs> I started using it, and it does seem to be like the miracle mix. Uh, so if you just want to achieve uh, uh, the results of those that have come before you, uh, the BRS 160 pack is probably it. So then another one in here you might be is I want to run Coral and Zook's Zeovit system. Yeah adopt the whole thing, embrace it. The system that has produced all those results for them for decades. And that is a balance of nutrient export, but high nutrition input, and then balancing that with all of the foods and, uh, and like coloration agents as well. But it really starts with just four items. Yeah, so the big four, I mean, this is a kit for you, makes it really simple, and it's the Zeovit kit. So you have your Zeovit Media, your Zeo Back, your Zeo Start, and your Zeo Food. This gets you off and running when you couple it with a, a Zeovit reactor like this one from KZ, or uh, one of my favorite, the Vast Marine automatic one that uh, does all the mold shaking for you. But uh, it makes it that easy to get started. Then you start exploring and expanding out into the other ones. So uh, basically, this is, I think, the foundation mm. and probably the most time tested method of carbon dosing wrapped around making sure you replace that nutrition yep. as well. So, uh, you know, part of this is, you know, making sure you have the right uh, bacteria with the zero back in there, but also with the zero star and zero food is kind of like carbon dosing, but you're also producing that bacteria in a specific place like uh, on uh, the Zeovit media, which will absorb ammonia as well. And then uh, you periodically pump it off, uh, often daily, and then the mulm comes off and then feeds into the tank and the corals are able to capture that live prey uh, and uh, feed off of it as well. So it's one of the ways that they found to lower nutrients, often what we call ultra low nutrients, but a mix of the bacteria mm. and uh, carbon dosing. But the part that I think was missed early on is the focus on then feeding the corals the nutrition. So ultra low nutrients, ultra high nutrition. I just to follow that up, we actually uh, loaned some information from one of their breakdowns. They yeah. actually show this in like kind of a grid format. You can find that link on most of the product mm -hmm. descriptions on Bulk Resupply. So go ahead and check out one of the products and you can see this breakdown of all the stuff. 
but it makes it pretty clear actually, hey, hey, these are the four things you really need for the Zeovit method. Uh, if you're gonna use nutrient control as well as input, but there's also a bunch of other things that you can get additional value out of and you know bolt on to the Zeovit system starting with the uh, sponge power. Yeah, sponge power. And that, that is another common add-on. This is, I, it easily says it in its name. You know, these are targeted for filter feeders, targeted at sponges, uh, actively promote their growth. Uh, and also there's a coloration piece in there for purples. Yeah. So this is one of those cool things is actually they're trying to actively promote uh, the creation and health of filter feeders in the tank. Uh, because those filter feeders will actually absorb uh, nutrients uh, and mm. excess pollutants out of the tank as well. So, you know, this is probably one of this is why this is one of the more popular ones added uh, right after the four. And the next one is B balance. Yeah, targeted uh, specifically for SPS and softies, but this is targeting some reds and pinks and, co and coloration, but also incrustation of your uh, SPS. Yeah, so building out that base as well as bringing out those reds and pinks. And so this is an interesting note again is, you know, why do they say reds and pinks? Because it produces that on their farm. All right, next up, Poles Extra, which is a trace element solution and probably the primary coloration tool in the bucket. Yeah, and there's two of them. There's Poles Extra, that's the one you need to know, and Poles Extra Special, less commonly used, but does have a, a specific purpose. These are primarily used uh, for growth, coloration, vitality, when you've got brown corals. So there's kind of two opposite ends of that spectrum. One is I've got deep, dark brown corals, uh, like SPS, and then I've got pale, light corals, you know, pale brown, uh, and in, in which case, uh, Poles Extra is for those darker, deeper browns to bring out some of that coloration. Poles Extra Special is when you're on the lighter pale side and you want to bring some coloration out in those. Two different ones, but the most common is Poles Extra. Again, the like primary coloration tool of the entire bucket <laughs> uh, and that the special is really designed for those pale, pale corals. Uh, and if that's your tank, that's the right one. Otherwise, most of you will find just Poles Extra is the right one. Our right, next one is a balance, which is like actually kind of like a, a biome solution to some degree. Uh, find like natural balance in your tank. Yeah, it's also said to uh, help fight cyano, which makes sense. Cyano being a bacteria, this is that bacterial uh, you know uh, support, especially if you couple it with cyano clean. Um, and then when combined with sponge power, they noticed yellow SPS coloration more prominently in their coral farms. And that's what they target with it. Yeah, it's really interesting. Again, like not necessarily that uh, some of the stuff is probably unintended consequences. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, you're using a couple of different solutions and it produces a different result, but it does it consistently mm. in a way that you can share with other people. All right, so the most controversial of the bunch here has been Zeo Spur 2. <laughs> this is actually single handedly responsible for that pastel look mm. in a vast majority of the acros in, in Zeo uh, Vit tanks. Yeah, so when this is the one that we uh, forewent on the 160 when we were running the Zeo Vit system on it, because we we're looking at darker colored corals. But if you go look at the gallery, the customer tanks, and the, that pastel color really speaks to you. This is where it comes from. Reduces that density of zooxanthellae. So there may be thousands of zooxanthellae in the coral tissue. Reduces the density. It comes out with uh, you know pastel colors, primarily to be used on healthy corals uh, because this is right kind of right in that edge of controlling what's happening biologically in the coral. Yeah. So this is really interesting. Where the you know. As a reef keeper, we're looking for not just healthy corals, but we're looking for the most visually stunning specimens known to man. Yeah. Right? Like we really want our tanks to look awesome, not just, <laughs> uh, you know, brown town isn't necessarily awesome. <laughs> uh, and so with a lot of like kind of that richer coral color is the reason for that is the coral has its natural pigmentation it has its natural fluorescent pigments as mm. well. But behind that is all this like brown zooxanthellae, mm. which really kind of like often, you know, overwhelms the normal pigmentation of the coral. So if you use this and intentionally reduce the uh, like amount of zooxanthellae in the coral, you know, the colors come out. Yeah. Okay, so the reason that this is uh, like so controversial is because the coral gets a vast majority of its nutrition 
from light yeah. and uh, the light you know is like it requires the zooxanthellae to turn it into energy right so if we naturally reduce the amount of uh, uh, zooxanthellae we're going to reduce the amount of food that's where a lot of this other stuff comes in you know we're trying to emulate the amount of prey they would find in the wild we're adding amino acids we're adding all of these other sources of nutrition we're promoting the bacteria i mm. uh, and you know this is one of those zeovit tanks and like many of these are decades long tanks that just produce super duper awesome results are able to do this now this is a brave move and it, it says specifically use only with really healthy corals right uh but I don't know. I feel like I need to take the brave step, yes. uh, maybe on the E170 soon, uh, and see what this kind of thing does. Because people have been using it for decades, especially all over Europe, and it is kind of a next level thought process. The next one is the last step of the additions to uh, the Zeovit system, meaning if you did the big four, you're actually doing the Zeovit system. If you're doing a couple of these, you're probably doing what most people do. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need all of these things. You know, use the ones that speak to you. Uh, but uh, the next one is the iodine co or iodide complex. Yeah, so the iodide complex, what they found is that you get deeper pinks and blues, and green or blue, green and red. Uh, but they also noticed that when they did a little too much, it turns green. So yeah. your yellows and things like that are in the tank. Uh, too much of the iodide maker uh, turn green. <laughs> that is actually something that I think pretty much every single uh, additive system out there has found. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, they're finding this in their own farms and they're sharing that with you guys. But uh, yeah, so iodine does absolutely bring out different colors. And the only difference here is sometimes uh, you know, people will use instead of the iodide complex, they'll use their like potassium mm -hmm. iodide fluoride yeah. option. Kind of a trifecta. Yeah, and, you know, and the, the reality is, is like all these corals and animals are different. And so if you try to like make a one blanket statement about all of them, uh, it's not always true. So sometimes you need to try different options, see what the results are, and then continue using it. So there's other popular options out here outside of just doing Zeovit or uh, if you're just trying to use these products on their own, like we have with mm -hmm. uh, the 160 here as well as my own home tank. Uh, there are some things out here that are actually really popular and great tools. Yeah, and we hit it early on up front. The two most popular by far of the KZ bottles that are used for other purposes, Flatworm Stop, Coral Booster. This is one that... I personally will recommend anytime I hear or see somebody who has acroiding flatworms issue, my only solution back when was rip all the corals out and dip them with insecticide. I've seen it firsthand right here over the last couple months. Uh, reduce and help control uh, acroiding flatworms without having to remove a coral. So flatworm stuff, you know, it's, uh, non it's not a poison, so you're not poisoning the corals, but uh, it builds this, uh, the tissue stronger in the coral and makes it unpalatable for the acroiding flatworms. If you, if you cut out their food source, they're easier to attack. And then I blow them off with a pump, let the, uh, add some fish in to take care of them, and I see the colonies in the 160 fully recover, vibrant, back to full color. I, I trust in this one. This is the interesting part is I think a vast majority of people that use these two don't have flatworm yeah. problems. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, because the tissue just looks so much healthier, specifically with the acros uh, when these are, are used. And I think where this happened is people were using it to beat the flatworms, at least the people that I'm talking to. Yeah. Uh, and then after they beat the flatworms, they just noticed the tissue is so much better. And by beat, I mean, just it's not a visual problem. They're still in there somewhere, right. but they're just not killing anything. Mm. And not all that different than the reason we use these to begin with, which was uh, try to beat uh, the money eating Nudibranx, which I'm sure are in there, but I haven't seen one in years. Uh, but what they found afterward is the corals look so great. So that even in new tanks that don't have the flatworms, they're still using it because the tissue uh, health uh, and growth of the coral is just so much better when they're using it. And also a little bit of a preventative, meaning mm. that like, if you're going to put hundreds and hundreds of acro frags in your tank, uh, the chances that you uh, like encounter one of these problems or pests are probably higher than you would like. Right. However, if you have like something like a RAS in there, like a six line and you're using this stuff, you may have these in here and just never even know it. All right, the next one is one we used here a lot on the 160, uh, but I just started using it at home again uh, because now I have a ton of coral. 
And they say that you can see the difference in a matter of days, and I'll tell you that you can. And this is why we use it in the 160. The 160 pack has the coral vitalizer in it. And, uh, you know, polyp extension is one of the biggest ones. And that's probably what you saw, like dro putting drops of this in and the feeding response throughout the tank. Uh, little bottle, a few little drops, lots of big polyp extension and, and uh, coral response. You know, they make a lot of claims like better uh, coloration, better coral health, mm -hmm. all that other stuff. Uh, I, I, you know, I can't you know, comment on that, but I will tell you for sure, you can train the polyps to be out using this stuff. <laughs> uh, and so uh, it happens, uh, you'll start to see it after a matter of days and then after a matter of weeks. You know, you, you know provided that there's nothing irritating the polyps in, in the water already mm -hmm. in a generally healthy tank, you can actually train the polyps to come out much more than they normally would. Mm. And for those who don't know, a lot of times uh, coral polyps only come out at night. Yeah. Uh, and so they're trained to go after, you know, the bacteria and the different microfauna that come out at night and catch. Now you're training it to be out. I don't know exactly what's in it, but I can tell you after using it just for a matter of days, <laughs> I'm seeing the polyp extension and even some of my LPS that never show polyps during the day. It's pretty cool. The next two are probably things that you are very familiar with, which is uh, amino acids. Uh, amino acid concentrate as well as amino acid LPS. And we'll get to the difference in just a second. But uh, we are like full-blown adopters of amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein after having the conversations with uh, Worldwide mm. Corals uh, and then you know testing what they did there with uh, the uh, coral amino from Brightwell. like. Uh, there is no question. Undeniable. You can, like turn corals around dramatically using, uh, you know, a nutrition tools like amino acids. And it's not surprising uh, once you understand the <laughs> mechanism of the coral. So, you know, the difference between the LPS amino acid and the amino acid concentrate, I don't know. You know? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I have done some research recently yeah. and I found that Actually, there's like the corals that, you know, use the zooxanthellae and uh, prey to produce their own amino acids and build protein out of it. Mm. Uh, but they're not equally good at all of them. And mm. so some of them they can produce a lot of and other ones are very difficult. And it really depends on the availability of prey, the availability of different elements and how they can, you know, produce those things on their own. And my only uh, like uh, feedback here is they must have found uh, uh, on their own at their farms that you know, LPS corals have a difficult time synthesizing very specific amino acids. Amino acid is not a specific thing. Like it's not right. just one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so that coral must have a hard time synthesizing a very specific group of uh, amino acids and this one uh, for uh, predominantly SPS. So uh, very, very interesting, but like probably the most important ones in there for me. <laughs> uh, I, I use this LPS one again daily. So the coral vitalizer and the amino acid one daily and the one, two, three, four weekly. All right, the next one is another bacterial thing being mm -hmm. Biomate. And like, you know, I often think of uh, some other companies as uh, like grandfathers are using bacteria to solve problems in the tank. but. I don't know why I think that because these guys have been doing it for decades and longer <laughs> than most people I know. And they found different solutions. I just say that they haven't been translated well to yeah. uh, uh, the United States in many cases. Yeah, but uh, Biomate specifically for you know, reducing mold. So probably one that you would consider with your Zeovit system. Uh, cleaning the sand bed, it's like, some of these bacterial additives that go and attack, you know, detritus collecting in places or, you know, sand beds in those areas that you haven't cleaned or what have you. Uh, but, and, and they also have, uh, say it reduces phosphates, uh, probably because it's helping uh, eat some of those places, those detritus ridden areas. Yeah, and so uh, it's absolutely been pretty well documented at this point. You can use a variety of different bacteria to clean the rock surface, yes. essentially, right? Uh, there'll be, you know, uh, aggressive bacteria will go in and dissolve or, or eat up all of that garbage on the rocks, especially this is older tanks. Mm. And one of the things you'll find universally true after that is not only does you can't blow anything off of the rock anymore because it's all kind of been eaten, but your skimmer goes insane as it's, you know, pulling out all the bacteria and it's pulling out all the garbage that it ate. And you'll see it probably in your filter socks, but there's no question, uh, all of the rock just gets cleaned off. 
All right, another real popular one in here, CyanoClean. In fact, I think it came in like number three or yeah. four. <laughs> uh, and not surprising because who has had problems with cyano? Uh, I think it's all. <laughs> yeah. Who has been like uh, publicly shamed about their cyano problem? I think pretty much everybody has shown <laughs> it. Uh, so it's a pretty pom common thing to have cyano in the tank somewhere. Sometimes it's like a plague and sometimes mm. it's, uh, you know, just a small Here problem. There, yeah. We would all like to get rid of it 100% uh, and not have this in the tank. A natural solution. Yeah, and this one works differently. So it's not like a chemical like uh, that you, you can treat it, you can see immediate results with some of those. This is a, a natural like a bacterial type uh, solution. So you're dosing it and expecting on a long enough timeline that this is going to uh, s defeat the problem, but you're not poisoning your tank. You're not, this is not a poison. And you can actually use it uh, long term. Like you can pro preventatively dose this to keep cyanobacteria at bay once you solve the problem. So there's two people out there. There's a, I would like to use a poison and solve this today. Uh, dump it in and tomorrow uh, not done. have any cyano. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, we've used things like red slime remover and like ChemiClean and all that kind of Works. stuff. No problem. Uh, it's worked. I've never had a, a, like a you know negative result from using those things. They're really cheap and yeah. easy. But no matter what, every time you use something like that, you're really afraid. Like I'm intentionally putting something in here that is going to kill that thing. And it happens in a matter of hours, mm. right? What, else uh, is it what is it? What else is it mm. doing? How do I get rid of it? And like, there are people that use those things and the tanks go totally sour. I've never witnessed it. I don't know, uh, but I've heard it happens. My guess is the reason that you're using this is it's probably a distressed tank to begin with and mm. pushing it over the edge, but who knows? Uh, but I gotta tell you, that this is actually very appealing, a much more natural solution. It's working on the biome again, you know, best works probably with their uh, A balance here. Mm. Uh, and, you know, if I'm looking to, you know, create that biome in the tank that's healthy and it just naturally fights off uh, the cyano, I think that's a better solution. It's probably going to take weeks rather yep. than hours, but uh, probably a better longer term solution. You know what? The last one is another one I actually have in my house and I forgot that I use, uh, but uh, it's kind of like a different purpose and probably why. Yeah, so amino, amino acid concentrate fish. So we kind of stumbled upon this when we were uh, building our DIY reef chili and we were adding amino acids and talking about amino acids for fish, not just amino acids for corals. And uh, there's you know some amino acids directed at just the fish and KZ is one of them and uh, sprinkle a little bit in your DIY uh, food. So when you uh, feed the tank, they're getting some amino acids also. This one, I'm gonna tell you, when you use it, you'll know this is different than those two. And again, you know, what, it's not just amino acids, it's uh, what, you know, that different organisms have more difficulty synthesizing right. and in a form that they're able to use in a digestive tract of a fish is way more complex than a, a <laughs> coral. Uh, so this stuff is actually kind of like, thicker and it's like yellow mm -hmm. and totally different. And the way that I use it, I mean, you could use it in a DIY fish food if you want, mm -hmm. but the way that I use it is just uh, using my pellet foods that I feed sometimes ah, yeah. is uh, I drip it right in there and the pellet food sucks it all up. The nutritional content of that pellet food just skyrocketed <laughs> uh, through the roof. Uh, so a really, really easy way to take, uh, you know, a sometimes incomplete source of nutrition with uh, uh, a pellet food and uh, add like kind of like a turbocharger to it with the amino acid fish. Totally forgot that I use that as well. <laughs> all right, so again, proof's in the pudding here. You can check out all the stuff in the reviews on all of it over at the Bulk Reef site right here. I will tell you probably uh, the number one easiest path is probably just the BRS-160 stuff if you have a mixed or LPS tank. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you just want it super duper easy and explore it and actually not have it be all that expensive on a monthly basis, this Coral 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and if you ask me, if there was anything else I really wanted to add on to it, it's definitely a daily dose of amino acids, it being the LPS or the concentrate, depending on what you have in it. And my favorite, this coral vitalizer that makes the polyps come out. <laughs> so check them all out here. And uh, I don't know. We'll see you with the next buyer's guide.